Hello there, welcome back. Today I'm going to be playing with these small pieces of mount board that I've actually cut out from another picture's frame. Uh, they're roughly about six and a half inches by four and a half inches and all three are the same. I've given them a coat of Daniel Smith's uh, transparent watercolour ground because I want to do an interesting sort of triptych on these pieces. It's a bit of an experiment to see how it works uh, but it's a great way to use your off cuts if you have any mount board that you've got spare or you want to buy some and give it a try. So I'm fastening it all down to my board with some washi tape. Uh, you could use masking tape but this is slightly narrower so I've chosen to use this because I want a small margin around each and then I will actually mount it up later on and you'll see the finished result at the end. So it's fun to do a triptych because we're going to be doing one picture which will actually make three. So it's extra bargains if you are into selling stuff. Now I'm going to use some of these Inktense pencils. Uh, Inktense is a very pigmented watercolour um, pencil. I like the colours and I've chosen just a simple palette. A couple of blues, a yellow, an earthy colour and a black. And in addition I'm going to use some perylene green and some light sap green watercolours that I've just put on this little plastic uh, tray. So I'm going to use larger brushes than usual. I'm not going to get too fussy. Uh, it's very easy to get fussy especially when you're using a small piece of uh, support. So I'm going to try and keep the brushes large for using for this piece. So we're all fastened down and I'm just going to go in here now. This is a one inch brush. Uh, it's a lovely brush and it holds plenty of water. And I'm just going to pull it across all three of these pieces of board. The watercolour ground is now completely dry. Um, so I'm just going to make some random shapes. I'm going to use the, the whole brush and I'm also going to use the point of the brush on its side which makes brilliant sort of lines. Uh, we can't really see much at the moment but when we add the paint it's going to make a difference. So dropping in some of that perylene green, it's a most gorgeous deep green. And remember that if this was a sort of foreground the darker colours are closest to us. So I'm starting with this dark colour here. This is purely an abstract. This is no representation of any place that I've ever been and this is just about having a little bit of fun with your paints with some off cuts and just seeing what abstract scenes you can create. Going in a little bit with some clean water just to soften up those edges. It's great when you catch and you pull along and just take a little bit of that paint through and you can add more paint. It's working really well on the watercolour ground. Obviously with it being transparent it doesn't matter um, what you put where. If you were to use a darker piece of mount board you could actually use white uh, watercolour ground if you wanted to but I'm not sure how that would work on a darker colour. Maybe that's an experiment for another day. So just added in those little bits of lines just kind of put in a little vague tree line here. Um, this obviously looks very dark or sort of bright but with it being watercolour it will soften, it will get paler as it dries and we can add some more water to it now anyway just to soften those edges, lift out some of that colour and just move it around on the pieces. Now I'm going to go in with one of the Inktense pencils. I've tipped the board slightly towards me and the paint is still wet. You can work with these pencils straight into wet areas which is brilliant because it helps the colour to spread. You can also use them dry and then wet them later which I will show you shortly. And I'm just sort of pulling it into random shapes really. This is a, an earthy brown colour. Um, just keeping that palette very very simple. Very subtle, very nature colours. Nothing too bright, nothing that will stand out too much. You could always add in other colours if you wanted to. This is just an experiment that we're having a bit of fun with here. So remember you will need a foreground. I always tend to get carried away with the midground and the distance and forget that there is a foreground. So this is a good way of adding in a very, very easy line of foreground and just taking that colour through into the different panels. So we've got a little bit of consistency going on there. And going in with a sort of 
a darker blue here. This is called Iron Blue and it's a really nice sort of bluey green actually. So it, it complements this dark perylene green very nicely and it adds depth. In different places, again, where the paint is still wet, you can pick up that colour and it will just take that lovely colour through. At this point, there's not a lot of use in adding detail. We want to keep it loose and I'm going in with this sort of um, sword brush here, which I really, really like. It's quite a small one and it means I've got a point, but I've also got a broad edge as well. So I can pull colour down or I can be very precise with the, the end of the brush. It's one of the most versatile brushes I've ever actually found. And it was actually very cheap as well, which I do like. So we're just adding in little bits of colour here and there. Just let your eye take you where you want to. Add in a little bit of depth here and there. Remember the foreground is darker. And as the paint is drying, you can see it's actually getting lighter. So I'm going to go in, add a little bit more dark here and there. And now back in with the pencil. And again, this is a lighter blue. This is a bright blue. I want that little bit of brightness in there as well, not just the dark colours. It's nice to just be able to work into the wet areas and also take out details into the drier areas too. Remember to just bring the colours consistently along each part of your triptych um, because otherwise you'll find that there's little bits that aren't quite the same in, in different pieces and they are all going to fit together so they need to flow. Now again, just washing out a little bit of colour with just clean water on this soft brush and just pulling it, you can see when I hit the, the dried, well the dry uh, ink, it does soften it nicely. Just soften that dark area of perylene green as well. We want that to blend a little bit more. I know it's dark foreground, but we don't need it to be too dark. Remember also that you can lift some of this out. So if you don't like the colour too strong, you can just use a, a damp tissue and actually lift the colours. Now you can see a little bit better and I'm adding in a little bit of detail with the Inktense pencils. Into the wet areas it flows really well and into the dry areas it works just like an ordinary pencil. Now I'm just going in, adding a little bit more of that lovely sap green. I know it looks really bright, but you can see the first layer that we put on has now dried to a really quite pale colour, so we can add a little bit more in while it's wet. And again, just picking up some darker areas, just moving that paint around until we're happy. I do find sometimes that I add too many of these sort of planes of interest, so part of my sort of attempt this year is actually to sort of reduce that a little bit and even simplify things a little bit more that we just get a lot more sort of detail now going on this is the sword brush as you can see using it flat and using it to pull the color up it's great in one brush it's brilliant It's really nice to get back into something loose. I did a lot of pet portraits before Christmas, a lot of detail, a lot of fur, so this is really relaxing for my eyes. And I hope that you're finding it pleasant as well. There's no pressure, there's no worry about what it's got to look like. This is just playing and experimenting. And working with a different surface as well is just something nice to try. See how things actually cope with the surface. See whether you actually like the textures that you get. The mount board itself is a slightly textured one to start with, so it should create some interesting pockets of colour and little interesting areas. I'm taking some of that sort of ochre colour into the distance, just adding that little bit of warmth, a little bit of branches and twigs. Just takes the colour through the whole thing. And at the front you can see there's a lot more. You see there I actually dipped the pencil into a little pocket of water that was on that little piece of tape dividing the pictures. And it just is enough to wet the end of the pencil and to enable it to work if the area that we're working in has gone dry. So you can dip it into water if you want to uh, and it will come off more of a fluid than a pencil.
I think really all I want to do here now is just build in a little bit more colour, a little bit more interest into this foreground. You could have left it plain, it would have just been fine, but I just think it, it needs a little bit of something to bring it forward. And where I've put some of this colour in, I'm just going to go in with clean water and just soften it down a little bit so that it flows. do not have too many harsh lines. We can still add lines in, but when it's softened it just adds a little bit more texture and a little bit more interest to the piece. I'm just going to dry this tape off so that the, all of these pieces can dry and then we'll come back and see how it's turned out. And here we are. I think this is a really fun experiment. Uh, I'm pleased with the harmony of the colours, the fact that it does look like a landscape without actually being a landscape. There's lots of interest for the eye to look at. So I hope that this will inspire you to have a go yourself if you've got some little offcuts of mount board. Um, have a play and see what you can do, perhaps with different colours, different sort of setup. And I would look forward to seeing you again for another experiment soon. And in the meantime, be well and keep painting. Bye bye for now.